Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we're gonna be out here looking for pygmy rattlesnakes. But before we hop into that, I wanna let you guys know, I set up a GoFundMe for the channel. Link is gonna be in the description, and I'm gonna leave one in the comments section. This is just if you guys wanna help with any of the funding when it comes to the channel. You know, it's not free to travel and film animals and all this stuff that we do. So if we wanna travel farther and be able to film better videos for you guys, please just donate. If you can't, the best thing you can do to help the channel out is to send it to a friend or just share the video or you know anything that you can do really helps the channel out so without further ado let's go find some rattlesnakes so guys this area that we're in this would be considered disturbed habitat this is all pine tree farm. See, this is not natural forest. All the trees are planted in rows. It's pine needles and grass. That's all this is. However, there's still a chance of finding animals and stuff like this. We actually saw a coyote a little while ago. Saw what looked like a gopher tortoise burrow. There's really cool stuff that you can find around even areas like this that aren't natural. Oh, come on, I think it's pygmy. That's a pygmy, it's a pygmy. It's a little one. Check him out. That is a pygmy rattlesnake sitting right at the base of the tree. Oh my goodness, that is a beautiful snake. Super dark colored and pretty camouflaged with all those pine needles. Let me set him down here real quick. That's a good stick. Break the tip off. Check him out. Woo! He's striky. Now one thing I need to give him a little bit more space than normal for a snake this size because they've got a good jump. They can jump up really high for such a small snake. Now a snake of this size in this species wouldn't be very likely to kill a person. However, their venom has been known to cause a couple of amputations in the past. Now their venom attacks the tissue cells of the body so that means it can be really rough on you and it can cause necrosis if not treated right. I always encourage everybody, if you get bit by any kind of venomous snake, no matter how potent, you get medical treatment. And that's the case with pygmy rattlesnakes. Especially in places like Florida, pygmy rattlesnakes, I think have the highest number of bites than any other venomous snake in Florida. Now I'm handling him with the stick right now. He's a little bit cold right now. So that's why he wouldn't be as crazy as normal. Normally they're pretty hyper. So I can afford to handle him with the stick. Really heavy bodied snake, and another name for the snake is the hog nose rattlesnake. Basically because their coloration is very similar to the hog nose snake, which is pretty cool. Now this is a pretty decent size one. This isn't a beast, but it definitely wouldn't be considered a baby. One thing about the pygmy rattlesnake is you're not gonna hear them rattle because their rattle is so small. Now dusky pygmies, which is what this guy is, have a much darker coloration with a little bit of orange, whereas we also have eastern or Carolina pygmies that can go from a kind of light grayish color to a brown and even an orange. They can be a bright orange coloration. It'd be amazing if this year we can show you guys one of those. He's sliding off his hook. Just lay him right down here on the ground. Sometimes they're not going to want to stay on the stick, and I'm not using the hook because it's a little bit too big for this snake. It'd be kind of difficult to handle. All right, I went and got me a bigger stick, a little fork stick, so he could sit comfortably. I wouldn't want to tail a snake this small or venomous ever. They're too quick, and they would definitely be able to whack you before you could get a hand off of them. Could be potentially dangerous if you had a bad reaction to the venom, but normally people don't die from the bite from the snake. However, the anti-venom is considered to not be super effective when it comes to treating the venom. So uh, it's normally a pretty rough ride when you get bit by the snake. Definitely going to be a day or two of pain. Really bad to get bit by one of these snakes. Black tongue, and they're mostly... He's crawling here a little bit. Mostly lizard eaters, skink eaters, and they'll even eat a little mouse, and they'll go to mice and small rats as they get bigger. Man, that is just beautiful. And look at the face. Face is my favorite part about this snake. Juggling them with two sticks is actually a lot easier. I'm actually liking this a lot better than trying to use the hook or just one stick. Check that out. Man, this one's gorgeous and much prettier than the last one we filmed for the Steve Irwin Day video. That one was a much darker coloration, but it was actually much larger than your average pygmy rattlesnake. 
Now this snake is not reacting too badly. He had one go at me when we first messed with him, but since then he hasn't had a go at me. Pretty relaxed. This is one of my favorite venomous snakes. He's getting a lot too, a little too active. This is one of my favorite venomous snakes in this area. It's absolutely beautiful. They've got a really cool belly pattern, all these little checker bits on their belly. I'm having a rough time keeping him up right now because he's getting a little bit more active. He's not too happy with me. I am a little bit close right now, but I feel like I can get this close because he's not having too many goes at me. And he's a little bit chilly. That's the only reason I'm this close to this snake right now. Kind of having to judge the snake's attitude to be this close. If he was being super aggressive, swinging at me a bunch, I wouldn't be this close. And I can see why they're called a hog nose rattlesnake. The pattern is so similar and they have a very similar body structure. Little fat squat body. In Florida, they're a super common rattlesnake to find. Here, we get Easterns and Duskies. They're pretty small, pretty difficult to find. They can hide under the pine needles and underground. And they share territory with the largest rattlesnake in the world, the Eastern Diamondback. Really crazy. These guys are normally pretty common throughout their range. But they are getting hammered by a lot of places exactly like this. Forestry companies clearing land for forests like this. And also, people building houses hammers them pretty hard. These little guys. And the lack of uh, a lot of gopher tortoises, because they'll hide out in gopher tortoise holes during fires. And without gopher tortoises, they have a rough time surviving those kinds of fires. Now, pygmy rattlesnakes one of the few rattlesnake species that can really jump high. They've got a really good jump. And right now he wouldn't be able to jump because he's on the sticks, but oftentimes they'll coil up and then they'll spring out towards something that comes towards them as a threat and they will bite 100%. He's pretty chilled right now. Look at those tongue flicks, smell in the air. These guys are pit vipers and that means that they have heat seeking pits at the front of their head. And when they're little, they'll actually court a lure. That means that they'll have a bright yellow tail, and he's got a little bit of a faded yellow tail because he's older, but they'll have a bright yellow tail, and they'll wiggle their tail, and it'll act like a lure, kind of like a fishing lure. And as things like lizards, skinks, and even little mice will come up to sniff it, or even think it's a little worm, they'll whack them, envenomate them, and then eat them. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and let this little guy go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like, and I will see you guys next time. Back on the intrigue.